And we are recording. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the sheet you will you got today. Um, and uh, so you had this to do. You have a flip grid to do, and your flip grid was to create one multi-step equation that had variables on both sides. It also had distributed property and combining like terms. Okay, so I'll be taking a look at that later. So meanwhile, let's do this. So a rectangle has a length of five and a width. So again, it's always nice if you can draw up your picture. So here's my rectangle. Here's my <coughs> length and my width is x plus seven. In this case, I don't want the perimeter, so I'm not adding up all of the sides. I want to find the area, and the area of a rectangle is, you know, uh, length times width or base times height. So let's just stick to length times width. Right? Multiply this side by this side, and I get the area. So in this case, the length is five, and I have to multiply by the width, which is x plus seven. Now to just simplify this expression, I will use a distributed property, and I get five times x, which is five x. Positive and positive is plus, and five times seven is thirty-five. So my final answer is this. So the area of this particular rectangle is five x plus thirty-five. Um, <coughs> moving on. Triangle, so a triangle has a base of 3 and a height of 6 minus x minus 6. So here's a triangle. This is 3 yards, and my base is represented by this line here. And I'm just going to write that as x minus 6. And area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2, right? Remember from last year or fifth grade? So my base is 3, so I'm going to substitute. My height is x minus 6, and I'm going to divide all that by 2. Um, on top, I'm going to use the distributed property, so 3 times x is 3x. Positive and negative and negative. 3 times 6 is 18, and all that divided by 2. But instead of writing one fraction, I can leave it like this, but I'm not going to leave it like this. I'm actually going to write it like this, because we're dividing both terms by 2. I can write it like this, n minus, and then 18 over 2. Which if I take a step, one more step over, one more, uh, uh, I continue, I will leave this as it is, but I will change the 18 over 2 to simply 9. So the area, area of this particular triangle is 3 over 2x minus 9 yards squared. Remember that we're talking about area, so the unit is unit squared. Find the perimeter of the okay, so number three. So find the perimeter of a rectangle that has a width of this and blah blah blah. So again, draw it up. Y minus three is my width, which means this is y minus three. My length is two y, which means the top side is two y. So to find the perimeter, I can do it in two ways. I can simply add all the sides. And from the last time I make a video, I, we, we realized that if we're adding, the parentheses really are not necessary around this, y minus 3, right? Because we're going to remove the parentheses anyway, and if we remove the parentheses, it comes out the same way, positive y and minus 3. So one way of doing this this way, you can write all the sides, add them up, fine. Common terms, add, etc. Or if you want to write that, you know it's 2 times 2y because there's 2 of them, plus 2 times y minus 3 because there's 2 with. So either you start like this or you start like this, it really doesn't matter. So if I do this, I get 4y, positive and positive, positive. So it's got 2y and then positive 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. I can combine these two and I get 6y minus 6. And if you look at the top, I think you would have gotten the same thing. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, plus another one is 6. And negative 3 and negative 3 is negative 6. So either way, you get the same answer. Now we're doing this particular shape, which looks like an upside-down house. We want to find the perimeter, and again, perimeter we simply add. So let's start with this guy over here. Let me go right under, actually. 2b plus 3 plus b plus 2, this one, plus another b plus 2, which again you could have used a 3 properly, plus 3 
b plus 1 and plus 3b plus 1. Since we're adding, I didn't know I did really didn't need to do this, right? Because the next step, had I written the parentheses, would be to remove the parentheses. And if I remove the parentheses, it would have been exactly the same. So now I get to add my like terms, all the two b's, all the b's. So this is 2, 3, 4, 4 and 3, 7, 7 and 3 is 10 b's. So there are 10 b's here. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7, 8, 9, 10 b plus 9. So this is the perimeter of this particular uh, shape here. Moving on, 5. An equilateral triangle has side of 3x. So if you know something about an equilateral triangle, it means that all the sides measure the same. That side, that side, they're all the same. So if this is 3x minus 10, guess what? This is also 3x minus 10, which makes this 3x minus 10. So I'm going to take the shortcut and I'm going to multiply. I'm going to add, uh, you can add 3x minus 10 plus 3x minus 10 plus 3x minus 10. Or you can simply write it as this because right, you're multiplying three times, actually it's three over here. So it's three properly, three times three is nine x, and then three times this guy here is negative 30. Final answer, this one. Six, a stop sign is in the shape of an octagon. An octagon has eight sides. One, two, three, four, so, I actually got to think how to draw this. Uh, one, two, one, two, three. I have no idea how to draw this. So something is eight sides. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, nope. Uh, one, two. <sighs> Why can't I draw an octagon? Um, one, one, no, one, no. It's eight sides. Oh my god. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that eight sides? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that has eight sides. And each side is 2a plus 1. So I'm not going to write this eight times, but I'll write a few times. Each side of this would be 2a plus 1. You want to find the perimeter? It would be 8 times 2a plus 1, or if you want to go the extra mile, and you can write 2a plus 1 plus 2a plus 1 plus 2a plus 1 8 times. Um, multiply that, we got 16a. Multiply these two terms, and we got 8. We're both positive. Final answer, 16a plus 8. 7. Okay, so Find the area of a triangle area, okay, so not perimeter area. So let me write the area of a triangle's base times height divided by two. So let's substitute. So the base is four. The height is represented by m plus two, so I'm gonna put that in plus parentheses. I'm gonna divide the whole thing by two. <coughs> Next step, um, before I do this treated property, I can actually simplify. I can simplify this four and this two. Two divided by two is one and 4 divided by 2 is 2, so I actually get 2 parentheses m plus 2, all that over 1, which I'm not going to write because it's not necessary. Three property now, 2m, 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Final answer, 2m plus 4 units squared. 8. So a Tina has two rectangular play pens, okay, rectangular, so there's two of these to keep her new dogs. The first rectangle has a width of 6 and a length of x minus 4. The second rectangle has a width of 8 and a length of x plus 2. What is the sum of those two areas? Well, let's find the sum of this area. So this is area, not perimeter, so I'm not adding all those sides. I'm actually multiplying length times width, right, base times height, so in this case I'm multiplying 6 times x minus 4, and in this case I'm multiplying 8 times x plus 2, okay. If I multiply, I get 6x minus 24, and over here I get 8x plus 16, so the area of this particular rectangle is this, 
And the area of the second plate pen is 8x minus 16. But she's asking you for the sum right, of those two areas. So now we can add these two. 6x minus 24 plus 8x plus 16. I can combine this with this, and I get 14x. Minus 24 and plus 16 gives me negative 8. So the two areas combined gives me 14x minus 8. 9. Write the expression of a period on a rectangle. So, so here's a rectangle. A length, so this is the width and this is the length. The length is 5 inches longer than the width. So the length, I can write it in distance. 5 more than the width. Right. So I'm going to use this to represent the width. So if the width was 5, the length would be 10. If the width was 1, the length would be 5 more, which would be 6. So the length, obviously here on top, it's also 5 plus w. And this on the other side is w. So I'm going to add up all the all the all the sides. So I get five plus w. I multiply that by two because it's top and bottom, and then two times w. It's really property. I get two and five is ten. Plus two times w is just two w plus two w. If I combine like terms, 2w plus 2w is 4w, and then plus 10, so final answer, 4w plus 10. The key here is write, instead of writing uh, L, you know, we're representing L as w plus 5, and w plus 5, okay? Um, 10. Write the expression for the perimeter of a rectangle, and again, here's perimeter we're going to add all four sides so it's perimeter with a length so again the length here's the width we don't know anything on the width so we're going to leave the w as w but the length is being described as something else the length is four centimeters longer so that could be four plus three times the width so now the length is going to be described in this manner right here on top if this is four plus three w this is also four plus three w so all my uh, all my sides of this rectangle are being represented uh, using one variable, which is w in this case. So we're going to add all the sides. So again, let's add the width. There's two times the width, right? Because there's two of them. Plus two times the length, because there's two of them as well. Four plus three w. Two times w is two w. Positive and positive. Two times four is eight. And positive plus times 3w is 6w. Combine like terms, 2w plus 6w can be combined, and I can get 8w, and then the plus 8 goes back here. Final answer, 8w plus 8 is the perimeter of that rectangle. Okay, so again, the, now here we have a triangle. And I don't know what type of triangle, so I'm going to just make a triangle. So. I know that the perimeter, if I add all three sides, is 3m plus 18k, oops, not 18k, plus 8k minus 9. So I already know what this plus this plus this is. It tells me that the first side measures, and it doesn't matter who's who, the first side measures 2m plus 8, the second measures 4k minus 3, and we want to find the measurement of this. So I already know what the total is. So if I take this, the total, and subtract this, and subtract this, whatever's left over would be my third side. So let's do that. So let me do 13 plus 8k minus 9. And now I'm going to subtract the other two sides. So in this case, I will use parentheses minus 2m plus 8. And I'm also going to subtract the other side, 4k minus 3. So whatever. The answer, well, whatever the answer is, answer is, it's going to be the remaining side. So before we do anything, we must remove the parentheses, right? So 3m plus 8k minus 9. So pretend there's a little 1 over here and just find this three probably. And if you, by now you should know that if it's a negative in front of the parentheses, a minus sign of the parentheses, when it comes out, when we, when we remove the parentheses, that 2m becomes negative 2m. Negative 1 and positive 8 is negative 8. As you can see, the 2m 
minus 2m minus 2a is exactly the opposite of what was inside. So likewise here, pretend there's a 1, and if you multiply, you get a negative and a positive, which is a negative. And a negative and a negative will become a positive. So if you look at this, it's, you have minus 4k plus 3, while inside the parentheses you have 4k minus 3, so the complete opposite. Now we can combine like terms. Let's choose, let's do the m's first. 13m, is there another m? Yeah, minus 2m. 13 minus 2 is 11m. K, so I have a positive 8k and a minus 4k. Positive 8k minus 4k is positive 4k. And then we have three integers, negative 8, negative, sorry, negative 9, negative 8, and positive 3. So negative 9 minus 8 plus 3 is going to be negative 15. So the last the last, what do you call, side of this triangle measures 11m plus 4k minus 15. Okay, so we have one more. It's a rectangle. And it tells me that if I add all four sides, I already know what the perimeter is. It's 14y minus 16w plus 8. I know the length measures 2i minus 2, which means this guy over here is 2i minus 2. So it says find the width. I don't know what this side is, and I don't know what this side is. So obviously, if I take this, the total, okay, if I all the sides added together gave me this, I can take this, subtract this guy over here, subtract this guy over here. Whatever left over is going to represent my two my missing sides. So let's do that. Again, it's almost like the previous triangle, previous problem, I'm sorry. 14y minus 16w plus 8, the perimeter. And if I subtract these two sides, and this one, I'm going to subtract and put a parenthesis there, 2y minus 2, the top side. I'm also going to subtract 2y minus 2, which represents this bottom one. And whatever left over, it's going to be the 2 with. So, this case, again, we needed the parentheses, plus 8, and then everything inside the parentheses is going to come out opposite. It's going to be minus 2y plus 2, and then minus 2y plus 2, if you like. Put a little 1 over there, a little 1 here, and apply the distributive property, and you'll see that it comes out in that way I mentioned. Um, let's combine like terms, 14y positive minus 2y minus 2y, so positive 14 minus 2 is 12, and then 12 minus 2y again is 10y. The w's, I have, I have just 16w, nobody else, good. And then plus 8, plus 2, plus 2, that's easy, 3 positive, so that's going to be plus 12. The remaining two sides, these two width, is equals 10y minus 16w plus 2. And if I divide those, if I divide that by 2, because that represents the sum of the two width, if I divide by 2, I'll get what one side is. So I have to divide the whole thing by 2, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to divide this by 2, this by 2, and this by 2. 10 over 2 is 5y. 16 over 2 is 8w, and then 12 over 2 is plus 6. So one side, one width, measures 5y minus 8w plus 6, and likewise the other one measures 5y minus 8w plus 6. You can always, um, in this case, check, because if I add all these four sides, I, will, I should get this. So in this case, if you double-checked, uh, you could definitely guarantee that you're either correct or incorrect. Okay, and that was your work. Don't forget your flip grid.